So Joe Biden and his team are aware of their very, very sad, lagging, pathetic poll numbers. Um, and they're trying to figure out what the hell to do about it. Now, I don't think they have a real good sense or strategy of how to dig themselves out of this hole. They've made that pretty clear. Um, I think it's going to take a lot, to be honest with you guys. Now, one of the things that they're contemplating now, which uh, might actually help a little bit, is reviving the child tax credit. Uh, that would be a very, very good thing, and it's, it never should have went away in the first place, right? They had a sunset, sunset provision on it, um, and it went away, and that hurt him massively in the polls, because it was a lot of help to a lot of people. And ever since that went away, it's, you know, that's hurt his popularity. And now they're talking about bringing that back. Okay, so that'd be one thing that would be good. But I think it requires more than that. I think you got to change course when it comes to Israel and Gaza, for sure. And I think you got to go above and beyond uh, into some new territory. Remember, he had his highest approval rating when he cut $1,400 checks to everybody. That's when he had an approval rating over 50%. You're going to need something like that. Right. You need something like that. The child tax credit is a beginning, but then you're also, you know, I think a good idea would be wiping out medical debt for everybody. I think it'd be a phenomenal idea. Uh, by the way, we have a story later on in the show today. There's a governor who's leading the way on that and it is mega based. So hold for that. But instead of doing something proactive, uh, changing course, uh, leaning into a messaging strategy, right? To be fair, they are leaning into Trump bad. They are leaning into, hey, you know, this guy's beyond the pale, this guy's an extremist, yada, yada. Which might work to some extent with some, you know, population centers. I feel like suburban voters, suburban independents, that might work with. But again, not enough. We're really just, uh, really just tweaking around the edges here, right? Well, we learned this from Politico. Ryan Grimm tweets it here. Biden's plan to shore up his left flank is to attack Cornell West and Jill Stein next week. Such a moonshot would pay enormous political dividends, yet Biden's campaign can't count on it. They must begin restoring the president's standing on the left now. There are gentle ways to do that, Biden's actions on Thursday, and more aggressive steps. The latter will, I'm told, include a multi-pronged offensive against Kennedy, who's not necessarily to Biden's left, by the way, Stein, who is, and West, some of which will come from the campaign and some from outside entities. Quote, we can set this up very directly. It's us versus them. And us is just voting for us. And then means voting for a third party or Trump, as one Biden official put it to me. So his brilliant move to try to shore up support among the left base, and by the way, part and parcel with that, is young people. I'm going to go after the, uh, the two percenters. I'm going to go after the Cornell Wests and the Jill Steins. And the now, by the way, let me just point this out real quick. Of those three... Jill Stein is going to be on over 40 ballots. I'm sure of it. The Green Party usually has their stuff together enough to get on the ballots in certain states. Usually they're on between 46 and 48 states. So I think she'll be on the ballot in 46, 48 states. Okay, that's Jill Stein. Cornell West, it's not a guarantee he'll be on any ballots. He said he's running as an independent. Well, guess what? He just announced the other day he's creating a new party called the Justice for All Party. Why is he doing that? Because in some of these states, it's so hard to get on the ballot as an independent. In some of these states, you need to make your own party to get on it. RFK is running into the same problem. He's on the ballot in Utah. That's it. He's trying to get on the ballot elsewhere. It's going to cost millions of dollars. And if you don't have the millions of dollars, you got to find, you jump through all these hoops they put in your way. Guys, bottom line is, it's always been kind of rigged against independence. But ever since Ross Perot's run in the 1990s, where he got 19% of the vote and didn't even win a single electoral college vote, basically handed the election over to Bill Clinton and screwed the Republicans. Ever since then, they're like, let's fully rig it against independence. So they're not going to be on the debate stage. They're not going to get any national press. And they're... Would they be lucky if they get on any ballots, right? Never mind a majority, never mind all of them, right? So they're, they're already like self-disenfranchised. And what's Biden's brilliant plan? I'm going to attack all these people. Now, I have no problem with going after RFK because I don't agree with him on the great majority of issues. But going after, R going after Cornell West, who probably won't be on many ballots, and going after Jill Stein, you know, funny enough, this is the first, like, genuine misstep I think the the Biden team has made. Because remember, what did they do to ostracize and alienate Marianne Williamson and Dean Phillips? Well, number one, the DNC was, like, literally rigging the primary, right? They Four states were like, we're just not going to have a primary. Hooray! Let's change the orders so that our best state goes first. Um, So, I totally forgot where I was going with that. Uh, Jill Stein, Cornell West. Oh. But the strategy was, I'm just going to be indifferent. They don't exist. That was the strategy. 
strategy was you just don't exist. I'm going to pretend like you don't exist. Everybody's going to pretend like you don't exist. The media, the DNC, my staff, myself. And that worked, right? That worked. So now he's effectively taking the opposite approach for the general election. My guess is maybe he thinks they're going to be on all the ballots. Maybe he thinks that that's the case and he feels genuinely threatened by them. But I don't think only Jill Stein is going to be on them. She's going to top out at 3% maximum, right? So honestly, it's one of the things that will make the left base defend them more, <laughs> right? I always said this vis-a-vis -vis Marianne's campaign. I said, it wouldn't even bother me if she gets smeared relentlessly by the media because at least that creates a backlash effect where people come in and say, hey, that's not right. Hey, that's not fair. What are you talking about? That's not true. It's the indifference that drives me crazy and they treated her indifferently like she didn't exist. To go after Cornell West and Jill Stein. I mean, I have many disagreements with Cornell West and Jill Stein. One of the ways to get me to defend them is to attack them unfairly, <laughs> as I have no doubt that Joe Biden and his team would do. Right? I'm sure, oh, you're a Russian agent, you're this, you're that, all shit like that, right? So, um, and at the end of the day, whatever criticism you could level at them, they have the trump card, no pun intended, to criticize you. Which is, yeah, 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 yappy, yappy, yappy. You're attacking us, but you're the one who's arming and funding Netanyahu as he's doing a genocide in Gaza. So I just think from a strategic perspective, I think this is really dumb to go after them. I think it's really dumb. I think it actually elevates them in the sense that, oh, the president feels like he should attack these people? Well, then who are they? Let me look into them. What's going on here? Why is this, why is this an issue? It sort of elevates them in a sense, right? So again, it's just, it's, I'm at the point now where it's like, if for Biden to criticize anybody other than Trump is like, who the fuck do you think you are? Given what you're doing in Gaza right now, how you're backing Netanyahu, like, who do you think you are? It's just, it's always going to ring hollow to me, always, because whatever issues people have that are not Joe Biden, it is nothing in comparison to what Joe Biden is in the midst of doing right now. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's a good strategy, very clearly. Um, I think it kind of elevates Cornell West and Jill Stein and RFK. And uh, I don't I don't even think he's analyzed it properly. I think he thinks they're going to be on all the ballots, and I don't think they are. I don't think they are. I think the only one who's going to be on most of them is Jill Stein. The other two, I have, I have no idea. I don't... They're struggling. They're struggling to get on it. I don't know if they have the millions they need to get on it, and I don't know if they realize that in each state it's different rules and regulations, and they're about to find out how super rigged it is. I mean, it's rigged anywhere you go. But it's certainly more rigged if you try to run as an independent. So uh, there you have it. Biden's brilliant new move is not some new policy and some new uh, marketing campaign to sort of ju juice his numbers. It's let me attack my left flank and see how that goes. My guess is young people who, who, who he's trying to appeal to here, that their main thing would be stop arming and funding Israel. Stop having babies get carpet bombed in Gaza. Stop. Do that, then you're much more likely to get our support. But that'd be far too simple an answer. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.